Hey everyone, it's Mark Sargent, and before I jump into the video where Bill Nye is going against Kyrie Irving of the NBA, I just like to frame this a little bit because it's something's been bugging me about Bill Nye, and you guys, I know a lot of you haven't really done the the homework on this, so I just wanted to read you sections from Bill Nye's wiki entry, and I want to start with this: Bill Nye is not a scientist. Not in any way, shape, or form is he a scientist. He is a man with a lab coat and a bow tie. He is an actor. He's not even a Hollywood actor. He's a Seattle actor. But let's get into this, okay? Real quick, from his wiki entry, Bill Nye, the science guy, is an American, American science educator, television presenter, and mechanical engineer. He is best known as the host of the PBS children's science show, Bill Nye, the science guy, that ran for five years from 93 to 98 and for as many subsequent appearances in popular media as a science educator currently he is the ceo of the planetary society so he has a vested interest in shutting Kyrie down all right his education literally is just this he studied mechanical engineering at Cornell University, where he took an astronomy class taught by Carl Sagan, and graduated with a bachelor's in mechanical engineering in 1977. That's it. That is all. A, there is no science background for this guy at all. He's a, got a bachelor's in mechanical engineering. Following that, and I'm just reading part of this. His wiki entry is pretty big. Nye began his professional entertainment career as a writer slash actor on a local sketch comedy television show in Seattle, Washington called Almost Live. The host of the show, Ross Schaefer, suggested he do some scientific demonstrations in a six minute segment and take on the nickname, The Science Guy. That's where it came from, guys. That's where it stuck. That Science Guy thing happened in the early 90s or late 80s, early 90s in seattle washington i know i grew up there i watched him on television i know when he made the transition from acting to whatever he is now a science educator even though he is not a scientist nye remained interested in science education through entertainment nye appeared numerous times on the talk show larry king live speaking about topics such as global warming and ufos Nye appears in segments of The Climate Code on the Weather Channel, telling his personal ways of saving energy. He still makes regular appearances on the show, often, often asking quiz questions. In the fall of 2008, Nye also appeared periodically on the daytime game show, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? As part of the show's reintroduced Ask the Expert Lifeline. In 2008, he also hosted Stuff Happens, a show on the then New Planet Green Network. In November 2008, Nye appeared in the acting role as himself in the fifth season episode, Brainstorm of Stargate Atlantis, alongside television personality and astrophysicist, I'm not gonna say his name, NDT. In the early 2000s, Nye assisted in the development of a small sundial that was included in the Mars Exploration Rover missions, known as Mars Dial. That's real original. It included small colored panels to provide a basis for color calibration in addition to keeping track of the time. From 2005 to 2010, Nye was the vice president of the Planetary Society, an organization that advocates space science research and the exploration of other planets, particularly Mars. In 2010, Nye became the face of a new permanent, exp permanent exhibition at the Shabbat, Shabbat? C-H-A-B-O-T, Space and Science Center in Oakland, California. Nye is a fellow of the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry, a U.S. nonprofit scientific and educational organization whose aim is to promote scientific inquiry, critical investigation, and the use of reason in examining controversial and extraordinary claims. His book, he's got two of them, Undeniable, Evolution and the Science of Creation was released on November 4th, 2014. His second book, Unstoppable, Harnessing Science to Change the World, was published in 2015. In March of 2015, I wanted to throw this in at the end, Bill Nye announced he changed his mind and now supports GMOs. Gee, I wonder, I wonder how, who got to him. So just to clarify, guys, 
You can look up. Just go to Wiki. Look him up. He, yes, he's got honorary doctorates from different universities who pay him to come talk at at their for their uh, their student body. All he did was put on a jacket in the frickin' early '90s and a bow tie and do a children's show where he was talking science to kids, and it stuck. And he he looked the part. He looks you know you put a bow tie and a jacket on him. He looks like a super nerdy guy who knows what he's talking about. He is not a scientist, but the mainstream media just latches onto that. They don't even look at his background. It's like, well, he's done so many things. He, he, he looks like such a, a, a stereotypical scientist. He looks the part, that's it. So they will interview him whenever they can, because there are, as far as scientists go, there's not that many out there that, that you can interview that actually look, you know, that they're dynamic enough on camera. He's an actor, that's all he is. Anyway. That in mind, Sports Illustrated dug him up after Kyrie Irving said that he was for Flat Earth, and they got him on camera, and here's what he said. Enjoy, guys. If you could sit down with Kyrie Irving to talk to him, what would you want to say? Uh... Well, you guys, you can't put too much energy into this. And I understand later he backtracked and said, oh, I was just kidding-ish. But it just shows you, I have failed. Oh, I no. have failed. No, you haven't yes, failed. <laughs> as a science educator. Uh, so, but in the biggest picture, the that the Earth is round is a fantastic uh, thing, to, uh, thing to evaluate. In other words... Uh, from a skeptical standpoint, when you go outside, no matter where you live, pretty much, you, you look at it and the world looks flat. This looked flat to ancient people for sure. But then as time went on and people uh, looked more carefully, they realized that the Earth casts a round shadow on the moon when there's an eclipse. And uh, the only shape that always casts a round shadow is uh, a sphere. Then they saw ships go over the horizon and come back. And so the evidence for the round earth, which way do I go? Yeah, is overwhelming. Where would you get this picture were it not for the roundness of the earth and so on? But the other, just in the big picture, uh, evaluating evidence and finding, uh, finding a means to think critically about specific claims is really important for all of us. And this, uh, keep in mind that in science or in critical thinking, philosophy, what you want to do is find uh, evidence that justifies your belief. You want to evaluate evidence, and this requires discipline, mental discipline, and the way we do it in, for the last uh, six centuries or so is, to eval is th through the scientific method. So this is a great thing for us to discuss, but it is really concerning when you have people uh, in the public eye or you have people in general who think that the Earth might not be round. It's really an extraordinary thing. We have spacecraft. We all depend on weather reports. We've got mobile phones. We're talking on electric computer machines right now. And so to have people that eschew or don't accept or don't embrace this method, this process that brought us all this remarkable technology, all the food that enables us to feed 7.3 billion people where we used to feed fewer than 1 billion, all this is through this process of science. And so it's heartbreaking when we have people that, that even joke about it. <laughs> so uh, we're just trying to change the world here. So uh, what else would I point out? Yeah, read my show, watch my book.